question? Um, so let's start with the first part of the question. Hopefully everyone is familiar with logs. Um, it should be something that you've done in A level maths. If you haven't yet, um, don't worry, I'm sure you'll find it soon. The first bit asks, if x is log b c, express c in terms of b and x. So we're gonna, that, that's something that you should kind of just know from the definition of logs. So if x is log base b c, um, then we can write c in terms of b and x as b to the power of x. That's just something that comes from the definition of logs. Um, so hopefully most of you are familiar with it. The next part asks us to prove log a of c over log a b equals log b c. That's something that you might be familiar with, you might have seen before in your lessons, but if you haven't, that's completely fine. Um, it's a very doable, approachable path question. Um, so what we're looking at here is we want to find an expression that contains log to the um, a of the thing. So what we can do is we can take this and take logs to the base A. Using just things that we know about logs, if we have b to the power of x, we can then take the x out to the front and multiply these two expressions together. It's very important that you know the sort of simple ways of manipulating log expressions and other things that come up in your A-level maths in a sub-question. Um, we can then use the fact that we know what x is. So we've got here the definition of x in terms of log b of c. So if we plug that in, We can then see if we rearrange this, it's going to give us log a of c, log a b, it's log b c, which should be this expression here that we wanted. So this is called the change of base formula. Um, again, you might have seen it before in your lessons. Um, it might be completely new to you. Um, but it's a nice way of rewriting so we can change the bases in these log expressions. So what we're going to think is this expression here is going to come up quite a lot in the next few questions. So we're going to expect to have to use it um, to prove some of these later statements. So we're just going to keep that in mind. So we're going to look at the first part of the question. Here we are given that pi squared is less than 10. We're going to prove that 1 over log 2 of pi plus 1 over log 5 of pi is greater than 2. So if you look at it straight away, it might be a little bit strange. You might wonder, how do we get from one place to another? Um, so I'll just let you have a think. Um, what would the first step be? If you want to just pop something in the chat, if you have an idea of what the first step could be for proving that, if you have any ideas. Okay. So, the way I'd approach it is, I see I hit over here, I've got the number 10. And also I've got log to the power of two and log to the power of five. So I might try and see what happens if I take it all to the log to the base 10. So yeah, someone said, try taking the log of the first expression. So in this case, I'm gonna guess that we're gonna take the log base 10. If you're not sure what to do, you can always try maybe taking log two or log five. Um, there's always time to play around with it and guess, especially when you're trying questions out for the first time to get an idea of how they feel. In this case, I'm gonna try log 10. So, part one. Okay, pi squared, just check I've got that right. Pi squared is less than 10. I'm gonna take it all. Over here again, we can bring the power down out in front, 
to get to log 10 of pi is less than, and log 10 of 10 is just one, because we put 10 to the power of one to get 10. I'm going to rearrange this now and write it as two is less than one over log 10 of pi. Um, so this symbol here that I've used just means implies if you aren't familiar with it. It just takes me from one line to the next. Um, it's very useful to use symbols like this to structure your working, um, just to make it clear what comes from what. Okay. We've now got two is less than one over log 10 of pi. Let's look at what we want to prove. So we want to prove that two is less than this sum of one over log two pi plus one over log five pi. So well, ideally what I'm trying to see is if I can find, change this expression potentially into the sum or if they can show an inequality um, that would link these two together. Starting from just one over log 10 of pi, I wouldn't really know where to start. You've got one fraction I want to turn into two. Um, you can potentially do that, but what I prefer to do is I'm going to start with one over log two of pi plus one over log five of pi and work backwards. Um, so as long as you're not assuming something by working backwards, it's always good to start. If you get the end result, you can always start there and see if you can work out how they got there. So these two expressions, I'm now going to use the change of base formula that we had before to rewrite them. So I'll rewrite the change of base formula down here. So it was log, A of C so yeah, I'm going to be using this formula here. So using that formula, I'm going to rewrite these two fractions as log 10 over 2 log 10 plus log 10 5 and log base 10 of pi. So just give you a moment to just check that's right um, and that you agree with that expression. So in that I am just using the change of base formula that we used in the stem. So you can see how it can be quite helpful here uh, because we now have something over log 10 of pi which is what we want over here. Now combining the two, we have the denominator is log 10 of pi as we wanted. And now we're going to add log 10 of 2 plus log 10 of 5. Using our simple log formulas, we know that log of A plus log B equals log AB. Um, so from this, we can just write log base 10 of 2 plus log base 10 of 5 is log base 10 of 2 times 5, or 10, which just gives us 1 over log 10 of pi. And that is exactly what we had before, so we know that this is greater than 2. So from this expression, we've got 1 over log 2 of pi plus 1 over log 5 of pi is greater than 2, which is what we wanted to show in the first part of the question. Does that make sense to everyone? I'll give you a moment to just ask any questions that you have that you think need to be answered straight away. And then we can move on to the next part of the question. So let's move on to the next bit. So part two looks very similar to part one. So we're probably going to be using the same sort of ideas to solve this. Um, we'll just be replying it in a slightly different way. Normally, as we go through the question, it'll get harder. Um, it's not a guarantee. Sometimes the end bit of the question could be quite simple, um, but expect that it'll be a little bit more applied. There might be a few more lines to it. Um, so here we've got two different things that we are given. We've got log two of pi over e is greater than one over five. 
and also that e squared is less than eight. So we're going to have two different things to work with. Um, and combining these two, we somehow have to prove that lot of pi is greater than 17 over 15. Um, just for anyone who isn't familiar with LUN, um, LUN is just taking logs to base E. Um, you might not have seen LUN before. Um, so if you haven't, it's just log of base E. Okay, so let me rewrite the conditions that we've given over here. Got log base two pi over e is greater than one over five. And we've got the e squared, it's less than eight. Does anyone have any ideas of how they would start approaching this part of the question? Um, if you just pop a few suggestions in the chat, just to see you thinking about what we do as a first step here. Remember, what we want to show is that ln pi is greater than 17 over 15, I believe. If someone said try making them both into log two, that's a good suggestion. So we want to try and make everything have the same base. So one thing I would say with that is because of the final answer, wanting it um, base log, base E, um, so ln, perhaps we want to try and aim for making everything a ln, or base E. Um, it's a really good idea. We want to make everything have the same base and then we can combine expressions together. So let's start off with this first expression here. Log two of pi over E is greater than a fifth. So I'm going to rewrite log two pi over e as log of pi minus log e. Um, again, this is just uh, a simple kind of let log rearranging. If you've got a over b, right, as a minus b. Um, again. Um, simple expressions like this is something that you should be familiar with uh, when doing step, but you'll build that up over the time, uh, practicing a lot for A-levels. Right. So now we've got this, and I want to write everything in terms of base C. So again, I'm going to use the change of base formula here. I'm going to write this as log E of pi over log e of 2 minus log e of e over log e of 2. I'm going to start writing it as ln um, from now on, just so it's clear. So now it's ln pi over ln 2 minus ln e over ln 2. Um, and we know that this expression is greater than a fifth, just by what we were given. I'm now just going to rearrange it a little bit. Um, as we want to have an expression for ln pi, I'm going to leave ln pi on one side and bring everything over to the other side. So you're going to have ln pi over here is greater than ln two times a fifth plus one. Um, the one coming from Lenny is one. So hopefully you can all see where that expression comes from. I'm just rearranging to stick lump pi on its own and multiplying up by the ln two and then adding the one from the Lenny. So here we've got an expression for lump pi in terms of ln two um, and some numbers what we want is that it's greater than 17 over 15. So ideally what I'm looking for is to get rid of this ln2 expression, replace that with just a number that I can work with um, and write in terms of 17 over 15. So we're gonna now use the second part that we were given. We were given e squared is less than eight. That's the right radius. 
So again, this time around, I'm going to write everything in terms of LUNs. So we're going to have two LUN E is less than LUN eight. Or alternatively, we're going to have two is less than LUN eight. So now we've got an expression in terms of LUN eight, but ideally what we're looking for is something that's LUN two. So I'm going to rewrite LUN, I'm going to write eight here as two to the power of three. This allows me to then take out this three in front and leave it as LUN two, which is what I'm looking for in this expression over here. If I then rearrange this, I can get two over three is less than LUN two. You can see now I've got an expression where LUN pi is greater than some sort of expression containing LUN two. And then I've got LUN two is greater than another thing. So now I'm going to combine these two. Um, just to make it clear, I'm going to label the lines where that I'm going to be using now. So I'm going to label that as line number one, and the second one is line number two. This means that when I refer to it, I can say combine one and two. And it becomes very clear to whoever is reading it where I'm getting these expressions from and what I'm doing. Um, it all helps me so I know what I'm looking at here. So I'm going to write this as lun pi is greater than a half lun two plus one. Now it's my expression one. And now I'm just going to plug in lun two is greater than two over three. That's one over five times two over three is one, which we can now rewrite as two over 15 plus one, which is 17 over 15, which is what the question was asking for. So if you go back to the beginning, just check. What we're proving is that lun pi is greater than 17 over 15, which you've just gotten. If that makes sense to everyone, I'll go sleep it here for a few seconds just so you all have a chance to ask any questions if there's anything unclear about that um otherwise we can move on in just a second just to let you have a moment let's move to part three now okay so part three here so it's given that e cubed is greater than 20 pi squared is less than 10 and log 10 of 2 is greater than 3 over 10. We want to prove that lump pi is less than 15 over 13. So again, this looks very similar to all the previous parts, but here we've got even more things that we're given. Um, so it's going to be slightly more complicated just in terms of the different number of different expressions that we're trying to combine here. Hopefully it's going to work out in the same way as the previous questions do, will. Um, and we're going to be using the same idea. So we're still going to keep in mind the change of base formula and think about it. So 413, 413, book part three. <laughs> Does anyone have any suggestions of where we can start? Put it in the chat. Okay, so we want to be changing everything to learn. That's a very good point. Um, and I think we are going to want to do that for this question. We're going to use change of basis to write log 2 pi into learn. Yes. Um, so, yeah, we can use our change of basis to rewrite the expressions that we've been given in terms of learn. Okay. So I think we've had a good think about that. Um, so actually the way I'm going to approach this question isn't to take everything in terms of LUN, but to take things in terms of log eight, log 10. Um, so the reason I'm doing this is um, kind of inspired by the fact that we have the same condition here as we did in part one. So in part one, we also had pi squared is less than 10. 
Um, and what we did there was take expressions in terms of log 10. Um, so since we have the same expression here, and we also have an expression already written in log 10, I'm going to start by taking everything in terms of log 10s. Um, and then hopefully, I'll be able to change it all to lumpi. Someone just said, does the second part have any relevance to this question? Um, I don't think so. Um, maybe something will come up. I can't remember exactly. Um, but for this, I don't think the second part is going to directly give us anything helpful. It's just helping us use the same ideas and practice them. So we're just going to scroll down and rewrite these. This first expression, e cubed is greater than 20. Part three. So I'm going to start with e cubed is greater than 20. So like I said, I'm going to start here by taking everything to the base 10. It's greater than log 10. So now what I'm going to do is expand this out using my log a b equals log a plus log b, provided that we've got the same base formula. So then we have log 10 of 10 plus log 10, so that's a 10 of two. There's two times 10 is 20, as I'm sure you all know, um, which is then one plus log 10 of two. So the reason I've done this is because you can see in our conditions is I've got a log 10 of two, which they've given me is greater than three over two. So hopefully I'll be then able I'll then be able to combine these two expressions um, and use this fact. Um, so at the moment, I'm just going to leave it in this form and just label this as, I think I had expressions one and two, so I'll label this as three. I'm now gonna start with pi squared less than 10, which was the second condition that they gave us. From part one, we rearranged this and we found that this can be written as log 10 pi is greater than a half. This is something that we did in part one. Um, so you don't really need to write the steps in between. Um, if in doubt, you write more steps. Um, I find when you're doing maths, when you're doing harder maths, it's very easy to make a little mistake. So just write more steps if needed. Nothing wrong with having those lines in again, just to check. So we're going to call this expression four. And finally, this last section, log 10 of two is greater than three over 10. I'm just going to write down as it is. Let's write this expression five. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine three and five together. In three, we have three log 10 of e was greater than one plus log 10 of two. I skipped that last line. Five gives us the log 10 of two is greater than three over 10. That's three over 10. Or we can just write this as 13 over 10. So I'm now going to just divide through by three, just to isolate this log 10 over here. Yeah, that log 10, that's a 10 of e is greater than 13 over 10. 13 over 30, sorry. Um, so now we've used these two. Um, conditions. 
but I still don't use this second one. So I'm going to now look at this second condition again. So log 10 of pi is less than a half. So this is number four that I had written down. So now I'm going to start thinking about what the thing that we want to prove is. So I want to prove that ln pi is less than 15 over three. So I think someone suggested earlier, we want to put things into base E. Um, so you want to write it all in terms of ln so we can get that final expression. So what I'm going to do here is with my log 10 of pi, I'm going to now use the change of base formula and change this into something with lens in it instead. So this gives me lun pi over lun 10. So that these two are just equivalent. Um, so then I can write this is less than a half. Okay, um, I can now just isolate the ln pi, so just multiply it up by this ln 10, write it as a half ln 10. So now I've got an expression including ln 10 and then pi. They come back over here. I had log 10 of pi, log 10 of e is greater than 13 over 30. This looks like it could be helpful potentially using our change of base formula, but it isn't quite in the form that I can use straight away because um, I've got stuff in log base 10 and I want to change things into log, log base e or lens. So I'm just going to rewrite this expression here. I'll just write it over here um, using the change of base formula again. So we're going to write this as ln of e ln of 10 greater than 13 over 30. So that's just 1 over ln 10 is greater than 13 over 30. Or as we flip this over, we'll write ln of 10 is less than 13 over 30. So just one important thing to think about when using inequalities is just making sure they're pointing in the right direction. Um, when I flip the fractions over, the inequality flip signs. If I was multiplying by negatives, I'd also have to think about that. Luckily, in this question, it's not important. All right, so now I've got an expression, two expressions containing ln 10. So I'm going to sub this one here into here. I'm going to rewrite this one over here as ln pi is less than a half ln 10, which is less than a half times 30 over 13. And this we can do because the inequality is sort of facing in the same direction. And this expression here is 15 over 13. So we get the final answer, ln pi is less than 15 over 13, which hopefully is what they've got in the question. Yes, so got ln pi is less than 15 over 13. So you can see in that last part, there's not much more in terms of content and special ideas. You're just repeating um, things that you've seen in earlier parts of the question. So it's really important to like, understand what you've done in the earlier parts to use that for the later parts. Um, but in this case, it was just you were given more expressions, so you had to balance them in between. Um, if you are to go back and forth between different expressions and change bases because you've written something in a way that's not helpful, it's just very important to make it clear where things follow from. So in this case, I'd maybe add an arrow here just to follow it along. Uh, but using arrows and things like that or numbering expressions is really good practice, not just for step, but for all the maths that you do, just to make it really um, legible and easy to follow, uh, which will hopefully give you more maths. So yeah. 
I think that is the entire question. Um, so I went back through that a little bit quicker than I was expecting. Um, but I'll have a moment here if anyone has any questions. Um, Jenny, if you've had any questions in the um, jam board you've posted, I think feel free to answer them now, I guess. <laughs> Just as a general thing, um, there are on the university, um, university YouTube channel, there's a few more step workshops if you want to go through questions. Um, but definitely have a think about them before you watch the entire video, because it's super useful to stop and think before you like watch someone go through it. <laughs>